Le Président, veuillez vous asseoir. The trial chamber is now back in session. Nous reprenons l'audience. The President, I would like now to give the floor again to the National Co-Prosecutor to continue her brief opening statement. Pour qu'elle puisse continuer ses brèves remarques liminaires. National Co-Prosecutor. I'd like to now resume my opening statement. Oui, je vais maintenant reprendre. However, the evidence will show that each of these security centers operated under the orders of CPK authorities and was ultimately answerable to the CPK party center. The CPK leadership, including the accused, was kept constantly informed of the identification and arrest of enemies through the submission of periodic reports by zone, sector, or military chiefs. In numerous cases, the CPK leadership was directly involved in the purchase being carried out at the security centers. Les dirigeants du PCK participaient directement au purge. Center, par exemple, sent le centre du parti du PCK a envoyé des copies de confessions d'aveux de S21 soldiers à des soldats de la division 920 pour so secteur 105, de sorte que les traîtres impliqués puissent être arrêtés et emprisonnés au centre de sécurité de Phnom Krao. Similarly, the Division 801 secretary who oversaw the old Gonsang Security Center received annotated confessions from Phnom Penh indicating the names of Division 801 soldiers who had been implicated. He would then instruct cadres in charge of old Gonsang to arrest and interrogate the names of the individuals. The evidence we will put before the court will show a high level Les of integration within the security apparatus. Une forte intégration à For même example, de de sécurité. during a purge within the Division exemple, 920, dans le cadre purge, over 400 soldiers were arrested 920, and detained at Phnom Krao ont été before being transferred to S21. The North Zone Security Center received those accused of series of offenses from several smaller security offices. D'autres centres de sécurité plus petits de partout dans la zone. Tout dépendant de la région et de l'emplacement des centres de sécurité. L'ordre d'arrestation provenait des secrétaires de zone, de secteurs de districts, de commandants militaires ou de chefs de communes de coopératives. Les arrestations étaient menées à bien par différents membres de la sécurité. Notamment or les military security units. De ou de communes, the prisoners ou les were often de brought to the security centers in large groups and then systematically processed and registered. Enregistré, inscrit. The conditions in which the prisoners were held can only be les described de as horrific. Ne peuvent être décrites the victims were deprived of horrible. any semblance of human les dignity. Les they were held in dungeon cells or bound together in dirty, overcrowded detention rooms. At the North Zone Security Center, over 100 prisoners lived, slept, and defecated in a single room. At Song Security Center, some of the prisoners were held naked in cells, each only one square meter in size. De mètre, de mètre Shackles were the most common form of physical restraint used to prevent les the prisoners from escaping or even moving without permission. Pour empêcher les prisonniers de s'échapper ou de se déplacer sans permission. Rows, yeah. of as many as les prisonniers étaient attachés en rangée de presque 30 What personnes parfois. Light offense prisoners were usually unshackled during the day to perform forced labor. Les prisonniers étaient en général 
Serious offenders remained separated at all times. Pouvoir faire du travail forcé. They could barely move while eating, Alors que, euh, sleeping, or even relieving en themselves. Ils pouvaient à peine bouger. The sanitary conditions were dreadful et même faire at leurs besoins. several security centers, including S21, Grand Tachan, Okonsai, and security centers. Les centres de sécurité de la zone nord, les prisonniers ont été forcés d'uriner et de déféquer dans des such as helmets, différents boxes, contenants comme cans, des casques, des boîtes, shells. De, des boîtes de munitions, des boîtes d'essence et même des écorces de notre coco. In some ces cases, contenants demeuraient dans la cellule et, ou alors ils étaient vidés the dans des boîtes à la fin de chaque in. rangée. Dans certains cas, les prisonniers étaient même forcés de manger à partir des mêmes casques dans lesquels ils avaient défaillé. Un témoin au, du centre de sécurité de Kokian décrit avoir vu des prisonniers entravés avec les, deux mains, les mains et les pieds liés. The prisoners were kept alive on starvation rations, which usually consisted of a thin gruel or soup. Over time, sur des, their bodies de deteriorated, notamment, suffering from intense hunger, ou, uh, some resorted to acts of desperation. Au fil du temps, leur One witness describes how a prisoner at the old confined security center used a bamboo uh, stick to cut a piece of flesh from a prisoner who had died of starvation and then eating it. Dans leur désespoir. Un témoin, par exemple, décrit avoir vu un prisonnier au centre de sécurité d'un camp de utiliser un bâton de bambou pour couper un morceau de chair d'un prisonnier qui, avait été, qui était mort de faim pour ensuite le manger. Et soit médicaux étaient, en général, donnés à seulement que quelques prisonniers pour les garder en vie et pour pouvoir maintenir les interrogatoires. À certains centres de sécurité, par exemple, le prêt d'un restaurant ou le centre de sécurité de la zone nord, les soins médicaux étaient disponibles que pour le personnel de la prison et les gardes. À S21, les prisonniers sont devenus victimes de différents types d'expériences médicales et on faisait des extractions de sang de force sur des centaines de prisonniers afin de pouvoir traiter des combattants blessés. L'ancien dirigeant d'une des unités d'interrogatoires à S21 se rappelle avoir vu un véhicule plein de prisonniers faibles qui s'étaient fait retirer du sang. Il déclare... Les prisonniers étaient inconscients et took the prisoners and put them into a avaient des difficultés à respirer. Et après qu'ils aient fini de leur extraire le sang, ils avaient retiré les tubes et ont pris les prisonniers pour les mettre en pour les empiler. Pour les prisonniers qui étaient sujettis au travail forcé, le travail pouvait commencer dès 3 heures du matin et finir aussi tard que minuit. Ceux qui avaient été Work was performed in absolute silence and prisoners were punished if they did not work hard enough. Le travail était fait en silence absolu, les prisonniers étaient punis s'ils ne travaillaient pas assez fort. Un témoin au centre de sécurité de Corton a témoigné. Si vous perdiez une journée de travail, alors vous pourriez perdre une portion de votre ration, c'est-à-dire le quart. Et une autre portion, si vous ratiez une autre journée de travail, ce qui signifiait que vous perdiez la moitié de votre ration d'aliments. Les sanctions pour ne pas avoir travaillé assez fort comprenaient d'être battu, torturé et même exécuté. Un survivant du centre de sécurité de Watt a témoigné que ceux qui ne travaillaient pas bien étaient battus et parfois étaient même enterrés avant même d'être morts. You will hear evidence of the brutal treatment to which the prisoners were subjected. A witness who has testified about the conditions at the Song security center describes watching soldiers beat a young man with an ox cap axle head because he picked a cigarette butt from the ground and tried to smoke it. Parce qu'il avait ramassé une cigarette sur le sol pour essayer de la fumer. Au centre de sécurité de la zone nord, la fille âgée de trois ans de deux prisonniers a été battue pour pouvoir avoir appelé sa mère à cause du fait qu'elle avait appelé sa mère. Elle est tombée malade et finalement est morte. A supervisor from the North Zone Security Center has described how the guards made an example of a prisoner who had attempted to escape. 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 Who had
in front le victime of the a été torturé, prisoners. battu devant les autres prisonniers. The guards nailed both of his feet to les a gardes ont cloué made him ses deux pieds arms sur une planche and ordered him to sing. lui ont fait écarter les bras et l'ont forcé à chanter. Et alors qu'il chantait, ils ont continué de le battre. A former prisoner at Phnom Krau Security Center du centre de sécurité de Phnom Krau prisoner se rappelle d'un prisonnier battu to de Bavar car il était accusé d'avoir essayé de s'enfuir vers les Yuen. And blood splattered Ils ont commencé à battre le prisonnier jusqu'à ce qu'il devienne inconscient et Then they du, took il, off the du sang qui a rejailli sur moi et les autres prisonniers. And stabbed him to death Ils ont with a enlevé bayonet. ses entraves puis l'ont poignardé avec les baïonnettes à l'intérieur de la prison. Vous entendez of how at the security center, a female prisoner was hacked Comment in the au centre de sécurité d'Alcansang, une prisonnière a was été removed and hung in the kitchen mutilé dans le building dos, to frighten other prisoners. At all of the security centers, prisoners were subjected to horrific torture as part of interrogation designed to extract confessions. Witness accounts of interrogation and torture at the various security centers provide chilling and heartbreaking glimpses into the terror inflicted on the prisoners. The most common forms of torture were beating, electrocution and suffocation. A former female prisoner who was held in the Song Security Center for some nine months une ancienne Describes prisonnière the use qui avait été détenue au centre de sécurité de Sand pendant neuf mois décrit comment elle a été battue pendant les interrogatoires They ou comment on battait pendant les interrogatoires en ces mots. Ils interrogeaient les prisonniers tous les jours. Les prisonniers, s'ils ne répondaient pas, the Khmerus les hommes, them si ne répondaient pas aux questions pendant l'interrogatoire, les Khmer Rouges les battaient à mort. À S21, interrogateurs utilisaient toutes sortes de techniques de torture, par exemple, la noyade simulée, et ils ont brûlé des prisonniers avec des cigarettes ou des lampes leur ont arraché they also tore the victim's flesh with pliers, forced them to hit each other, force-fed them excrement and urine, and forced them to pay homage to objects or images of dogs. The evidence we will put before you includes contemporaneous documents which record the in chilling detail the systematic and ruthless use of torture. Enregistre dans un détail the S21 report effrayant prepared by the cadre in charge of interrogating Kai Kemho, a former high-ranking CBK cadre, states on the morning of 20 July 77, we pounded him one more round. Nous This frappé. time, he reacted, une cursing, une autre saying he was not a traitor. Cette fois il a Those réagi. that implicated him jury, were all traitors. His hell got traître, weaker, but there was nothing remarkable. Sa santé, euh, On the affaibli, afternoon of 21 July 1977, we pounded him another round. Nous avons passé Electrical wire and shit. This avec time, he cursed those who hit him very much and said, go ahead and beat me to death. Il a juré contre him ceux qui l'ont frappé et on dit « vas-y, frappez-moi à mort ». No, on a fait manger deux ou trois ran. cuillères d'excréments de plus. By il a demandé we went à propos de « him no » et « ran ». Le soir venu, he became delirious. on a recommencé avec le fil électrique Later, he assez sérieusement. A bit, as il il a été frappé d'un délire, il allait mieux. Plus tard, At Krang Tang Chan, the measures of torture avis. included severe beatings with whips and Chan, rattan sticks, hanging prisoners euh, upside down, using pincers to pull noses and nails, and suffocating prisoners with plastic bags. Prisoners, pinces pour leur arracher prisoners le nez frequently died ongles, from torture. Le asphyxier les prisonniers avec des sacs de plastique. One witness describes the torture of three women at this security office. Sous la torture. Un témoin décrit la torture de trois femmes à ce centre de sécurité. Ils leur ont fait enlever leurs pinceurs pour pull off leurs noses et leurs lobes. Et ils ont mis de l'acide sur eux. 
poured water into them and dragged them outside naked. They used their pinces to cut their their livers. The nez. As I indicated earlier, confessions were used to identify additional enemies. For example, at some security centers, the confessions were used by the chairman, who then prepared files on those who had been implicated. For example, at the center of security, the files were revised by the secretary who prepared the documents on those who had been implicated. He had the confessions delivered to corporate communes. Mobile units and other security offices. First arrests followed. Other arrests followed. Interrogators, notes, and confessions were sent to the district office and in special cases to the sector office. Au bureau de secteur. Le chef de Kukuluit participait à des réunions mensuelles au bureau de district avec les chefs de coopérative et d'unité en responsable de la sécurité. Le bureau de sécurité envoyait aussi des rapports mensuels au bureau de district. Les chefs de district participaient à des réunions bimensuelles where they reported on issues such as food and security and received orders on who was to be killed and who was not. Torture, starvation, lack of medical care and imprisonment in unhygienic conditions resulted in innumerable of deaths at these security offices, many thus perished even before they were taken away to be executed. There were also numerous cases of suicide by prisoners desperate to escape the sheer agony of their imprisonment and torture. At S21, even guards committed suicide out of fear of arrest and torture. At Okonsang, several prisoners hanged themselves. At Song, clothes were taken away from prisoners in order to prevent this from happening. Most of those who did not die from starvation, illness, exhaustion, or torture were Ultimately executed. executed. Typically, specific sites away from the main compound general, were used for executions and mass burial of prisoners. De principal était utilisé pour les executions executions were methodical and highly organized, les and usually occurred at night. Très Et se Most en général often, la nuit. prisoners were blindfolded la temps, and tied, les les yeux bandés, then loaded onto traps attachés, and driven away in groups. Dans des camions, Although the groupe. executions were conducted with the strict secrecy, Même evidence si of these horrific events has secret, survived. The owners will hear numerous accounts of how the cadres disposed of CPK-supposed enemies se sont débarrassés des ennemis supposés du PCK. The manner of execution was almost identical. La façon d'exécuter était presque the identique partout. Une fois au site de Frost, on demandait aux prisonniers de s'agenouiller, on leur tranchait la gorge, ou on les frappait au bas de la nuque avec un objet lourd. Such as of the neck with a heavy object, such as a wooden club or an ox cart handle. They were buried in unmarked pits, which, in many cases, the victims themselves were forced to dig. One witness describes the victims of the prisoners from the Grand Dachan Security Center. One witness describes the executions of the prisoners in the center of the security center. The tool they used to kill prisoners was a digging hoe with a handle about one meter long, used to strike them at the base of the neck. When a prisoner fell over, a sword was used to cut his throat. Une fois que les étaient on utilisait une épée pour leur trancher la gorge. A witness from the Song Security Center described the executions as follows. 
They hit the prisoner with a cat axle, which was about one meter long. They strapped at the base of the neck, then grabbed their hair and pulled back and stabbed and cut the windpipe with a bayonet. Then they cut open the abdomen from top to bottom, then untied them and threw them into the pit. You will hear how even the most defenseless of victims, young children, were executed in cold blood. They were usually killed by being swung against three trams. One witness at the Grand Tatian Security Center describes the murder of two little girls after their parents were killed. The other girl was about three years old and was killed by the Sam. A été tué par le prénom de Sam. Girl was about two years old. La cadette, elle, était âgée d'environ deux ans. Le tout l'a prise par les pieds and her head into et the trunk lui a fracassé la tête tree. contre la souche d'un tamarinier. Un autre témoin du centre de sécurité de Sang rappelle quand ce qu'il a vu était exécutionné. J'ai vu des taches de sang et des morceaux de cerveau d'enfants and around the tree stump. I saw dead bodies of children scattered on the ground near the croissant tree. The children were toddlers, the age between two and three years. Today, it is impossible to quantify the exact number of victims who suffered and died at these 11 security centers. Testimonial and physical evidence indicates, however, that the deaths run into tens of thousands. By way of example, it is likely that more than 15,000 people perished at S21. The number of bodies recovered from mass grave at Grand Tatian could be as high as 1,700. Estimations of burial sites, which were used by the North Zone Security Center, have yielded some 6,000 corpses. Thousands of bodily remains Nord. were exhumed at the Song Security Center. They have recovered 6,000 corpses. The millions of remains have been exhumed at the Center of Security Center. As horrific as they are, the figures horrible, which are available. Represent only a proportion of those who died. Qu'une part de ceux qui sont morts. Genocide. Maintenant, I will now move on to the charges of genocide against the accused, arising out of the campaigns to eliminate the Cham and the Vietnamese ethnic groups in Cambodia. The evidence which will be put before the trial chamber demonstrates that Cham's in the Kampong Cham province, and the Vietnamese in the Prey Veng and Swarian provinces were subject to systematic extermination ordered by the CPK party center with the intention of destroying the two groups. We will put before you evidence that proves the organized and systematic destruction of these two groups under the orders of the CPK leadership. The evidence of orders to destroy the groups includes publications of the revolutionary flag magazine, speeches by the accused, the regime's official statements, as well as telegrams reporting the crimes to the party center. I will first provide an overview of the evidence relating to the genocide of the Chams. Genocide of the Chams. The accused are charged with the genocide of the Chams in the Kampong Cham province, which took part in the period 1977-1979. The Cham people are the descendants of the Kingdom of Champa, who have lived in present-day Cambodia for centuries. The largest concentration of this community has traditionally been in Kampong Cham, Kampong Chinang, and Pusat provinces. Prior to the assumption of power by the CPK, Jams practiced Islam, spoke their own language, and wore their distinctive traditional clothing. They identified themselves as a separate ethnic and religious group and were also identified as such by the majority Khmer population.
As I noted earlier, déjà, the CPK politically professed tolerance for all religions. Over the radio, jams were referred to as fraternal Cambodian Muslims. The party sought to portray an image of a society in which minorities were treated without discrimination. The reality was, however, very different. At the May 1975 party conference, which, may, which my colleague will describe, Pol Pot and Nguyen Chia instructed secretaries of zones, sectors, districts, and military units based throughout the country that all religions were to be eliminated. Jams were to be forced to raise pigs and eat pork. Practices contrary to their religious beliefs, anyone who refused was to be killed. The CPK leadership also set out to create an ethically homogeneous Cambodia. This would have tragic consequences for Jams, as Elizabeth Becker explains. The Khmer Rouge policy of eliminating ethnic differences and creating a new race had the greatest effect on the Muslim Jams. These exotic people were twice doomed for their foreign race and for their reactionary faith. In areas under its control, the CPK had begun breaking up jam communities and suppressing their religious and civil freedom as early as 1973. In 1973 and 1974, virtually all jams in CPK southwest zone were relocated to the north zone. Ben Kiernan, who has undertaken extensive research into CPK's uh, persecution of the jams, notes a February 1974 CPK policy document issued in the North Zone, entitled Decisions Concerning the Line on Cooperatives of the Party in Sector 31. This document stated that the incorporation of jams into cooperatives should be delayed because it is necessary to break up this group to some extent, do not allow too many of them to concentrate in one area. In response to CPK's persecution, jam communities rebelled in a number of areas. The first Rebellion took place in Sector 31. By late 1974, arrests of Jam leaders led to rebellions in Krochma district in Kampong Cham province. By late 1974, Jams, who had been members of the Khmer Rouge in Sector 21, helped uh, form a breakaway group known as Khmer Saw and took to the forest. Sam Mesom tells that the Khmer Rouge took all their belongings and that inhabitants of Kopal tried to defend themselves with knives. My child and my grandson were in the kitchen. I took off my clothes and skirt and they pointed a gun at me and forced me away from my home. They forced me to leave my house with nothing and they separated me from my husband and two of my sons. San Mei Sam was forced from her home and like hundreds of thousands of other Cambodians had to exist under utterly inhuman conditions. My job at that time was to look after the cows, cut the grass and plant rice. They boiled the human excrement to make fertilizer and they forced me to taste it, asking was it salty or not. By the time the Pol Pot regime collapsed, she'd lost everything. My husband and 13 of my kids are all dead. 
and I don't know where my grandchildren are or where their graves are located. But because of my suffering, I must be strong. Otherwise, I'm afraid I will become crazy. When I speak about it, it makes me better because if I keep it inside myself, I'd only suffer more. POW Tran Ban from April 1975, CPK's systematic persecution of the Jams included prohibition of Islamic practices and Jam language, the burning of Korans, and the destruction of the mosques, or their conversion to other uses, and killings of charm leaders and those who refused to comply with the orders to abandon their religion. Charm women were not permitted to wear the hijab their traditional head covering. Those who spoke charm were threatened with death. As a result, by 1979, Cham children no longer spoke the Cham language. Witnesses will testify that the Chams lived in constant fear as any failure to follow CPK rules often resulted in arrest and execution. Among its enemies, the CPK reserved a special place for the Chams. It considered them to be even lower than the 17th of April people. In late 1975, the CPK continued to move Cham communities from their home villages and disperse them in predominantly Khmer villages. We will put before you evidence showing how tens of thousands of Chams were moved to the north and northwest zones as part of a policy designed to break up over 100,000 Muslims living in the east zone. In Kampung Cham province, men were often separated from the Cham women and children and moved to different areas as part of mobile work brigades. During the month of Ramadan's in September 1975, Cham rebellions against the CPK took place in Koh Pal and Swai Klang villages in Krochma district, Kampong Cham province. Both rebellions were crushed by the CPK forces. As we will see, from 1977, Krochma became a primary target in CPK's genocide campaign against Jams. From 1977, the CPK carried out a concerted com campaign to annihilate all remaining Jams in Kampong Cham province, which was then part of the central and east zones. The implementation of this plan was systematically coordinated by senior CPK cadres who reported to the party center, including Kai Bok, Secretary of the Central Zone. Some of the massacres were carried out by a special intervention unit of the party center, which reported directly to Sun Sen, the Minister of Defense. The Secretary of Sector 41 and Deputy Secretary of the Central Zone took active part in the execution of this plan. A witness describes a meeting in Kong Mie district at which the CPK official said that the jam should be guarded up and taken to their local bases. In CPK language, this was an order to execute the victims. Ten days after the meeting, 
Ukraine, jammed, were removed from the work sites and taken to security centers in their respective districts. A witness who disguised uh, his jam identity in order to survive has described a CPK meeting in Chamgale district in 1977, which discussed the plan to smash the enemy. The chairman of that meeting declared, the enemies of the revolution are many, but our biggest enemy are Cham. So the plan calls for the destruction of all the Cham people before 1980. The same witness secretly read an official CPK publication entitled The Plan for Progressive Cooperatives, which stated that Jam is the biggest enemy who must be totally smashed before 1980. Yet another witness who lived in Krochma district in 1977 was told by a security cadre who did not realize that he was speaking to que charm individual that uh, the remaining charm people would soon be killed. Tuer. The case file contains other evidence of organized targeting of the charms in Kampung Cham province, in Kongmi district. The upper echelon ordered that the names of charms within various work sites be recorded. Only months later, all charms were removed from these work sites. Jams were clearly targeted only because of their ethnicity and not because they were otherwise suspected of being enemies of the regime. A former member of the Long Sword Militia, which was formed by Southwest Zone cadres and was operating in Kongmias district states. The old people like me were not arrested. The new people were the same. Only the Cham people were arrested. Within the Kongmias and Krochma districts, Chams were systematically rounded up and transported to the two district security centers. The Wat O Trokun Security Center in Kongmis District and the Krochma Security Center. On a single day in September in 1977, all 300 members of the Cham community in the Piem Kong commune were arrested and taking, taken to Wat this mass arrest was ordered by the district secretary. A witness who has recruited to conduct the arrest describes the event as follows. All those villages were afraid. Some cried, but no one dared to run away. I felt very sorry for all those villages because most were people I knew and we had gone fishing together. The victims were subsequently executed in a plantation adjacent to the prison. Young children were smashed against tree, uh, trees and the executioners had competition to see who could kill people the quickest. The chief of security for the commune from which these victims were arrested explained that Cham people were a different race and therefore had to be smashed. A Cham witness escaped while being escorted to Wat O Trakun with other members of his community and then evaded arrested by hiding in the marshes. He recalls the torturous night following his escape. I did not see it with my own eyes, but I heard the screams. I heard my little brother scream. I knew it was him, because being killed, the people screamed out to Allah for help, screamed for their mothers, all of this in Cham, and there were screams of pain. My mother and little brother were among those killed. 
just before dawn, the killing was over. Mass arrests and killings of jams in the Krochma district were equally systematic. A jam woman who was a young girl working in a mobile unit in Krochma district in 1977 has described how some 35 unmarried jam girls were taken to an abandoned house for execution. While they sat and waited, they could hear the sharpening of a knife the CPK card are saying, horn, that knife sharp because the pigs are very big today. The girls were then questioned as to whether they were jam, Khmer or mixed race, and divided accordingly. This is her description of what followed. Then a cadre shouted the order, jam to one side, Khmer to the other, and mixed race to another. I had already light, uh, light and said I was Khmer, so I had to go to the Khmer side. In fact, all 36 girls were good friends of mine and we were all pure jam. The lying was done for the sake of survival. Those who had declared themselves either mixed race or jam were taken from the house and made to lie on a plank across a pit. Each girl was laid face down on a board, had her throat cut from behind, and was then dropped into a pit. As the pit was not deep, the witness could see the girl's hands and feet twitching. She says, one after another, they died. No one dared scream or cry. Some girls were stripped naked and raped before they were killed. Those girls who had falsely claimed to be Khmer were spared and given bowls of pork soup to eat to see if they had been lying. We will put before you evidence which demonstrates that mass executions of charms in the Krochma district continued into 1978. A Cham man who managed to escape a mass killing of Chams from Tria village has described how CPK carters tied and drowned groups of Cham men in the Mekong River. In his statement, he recalls, I was completely terrified as I watched the men, some crying, some screaming, as they fell to the ground and rolled as the boat pulled away toward the middle of the river. At midstream, one Khmer Rouge loosened the end of the rope that was tied to the boat. The boat kept repeating this over and over throughout the entire day. In addition to this massacre, numerous other executions took place in Trier village in Krochma district. Witnesses will testify how, upon returning to the area in 1979, they discovered numerous pits containing corpses of jam victims. The impact of the genocide campaign in Krochma district was devastating, as one witness puts it. They searched out the jam so they could wipe out every last one of us. The eight members of my family were all killed. I was the sole exception because I disguised myself as being another race. The defense will tell you that those at the center had very little power over knowledge of these mass executions. They will tell you that they did not intend the destruction of the jam as a group, but only only wished for the implementation of new rules that banned religion, but these positions are fundamentally unsustainable. The massacres were planned by and reported to the highest echelons of the CPK. The level of organization of the killings and the destruction of entire communities in Kampung Cham demonstrate that these were not random crimes, but part of the systematic attempt or rather, a systematic attempt to destroy each and every Cham in Krochma district and Kongmi's district of Kampung Cham province. During these massacres, the Cham people 
were not investigated for any offenses against the regime. Any interrogation extended no further than to establish that the victims were jammed. Once their ethnicity was established, the victims were inevitably executed. All members of the community were targeted, men, women, children and the elderly. Your Honours, the campaign Madame to Sully annihilate Sully the jams in Kampung Cham province had a devastating impact on this community. The end result was the elimination of the substantial part of the jam population of the province. For example, of the Cham people who lived in the four known Cham villages of Kongnias district, only two survived. As many as 10,000 Cham were executed at Wat Otrakun security center alone. Approximately 90% of the Chams who had lived in Koh Pal and Swai Klang villages in Krochma district were dead by the end of the DK regime. The evidence will be put before you will improve or will prove beyond a reasonable doubt that these were acts of genocide for which the accused are criminally responsible. Genocide of the Vietnamese. I will now turn to deal with the charge of genocide of the Vietnamese. Like Jams, the Vietnamese are a separate ethnic group in Cambodia, distinguished from the general population by traits such as physical features, language and culture. They identify themselves as Vietnamese and are recognized as such by the Khmer population. Prior to CPK's rise to power, Vietnamese communities were predominantly concentrated in, vill in villages around the Tun Le Sap Lake and in areas bordering Vietnam, such as Preveng and Swai In 1970, the ethnic Vietnamese population in Cambodia was estimated to be around 400,000 to 450,000. Almost half of them were deported to Vietnam by the Khmer Republic regime and many were killed. When Pol Pot and the accused came to power, they instituted their own policy to rid Cambodia of the Vietnamese minority. The initial manifestation of this plan was a removal of some 150,000 to 200,000 Vietnamese people from Cambodia in 1975. The Vietnamese were deported mainly to Vietnam, where in many cases they were exchanged for salt and rice. Around 20,000 Vietnamese remained in the country in late 1975, many of them members of the ethnically mixed families. The try to annihilate all of them began in 1977, and this campaign was so systematic and methodical that by January 1979, almost all remaining Vietnamese people had been wiped out. From 1977, onward, the CPK called on all Cambodia to force the deep hatred toward their Vietnamese neighbors. By April 1977, the party leadership openly employed the language of genocide in relation to the Vietnamese. It proclaimed that it was imperative to wipe up the people, to sweep more of them and make things permanently clean. By April 1978, issue of its publication, Revolutionary Flag, the party leadership proudly claimed that, though there used to be nearly one million of them, now there is not one seat. You will hear how, in pursuing this genocidal plan, the CPK leadership imposed a view of the Vietnamese as a lower race and saw their extermination as a form of racial or purification. The accused sought to radicalize 
the direct perpetrators by inventing or exploiting cultural myths and racist stereotypes associated with the Vietnamese. From 1977 onward, official CPK correspondence and statements referred to Vietnamese as Yuan, describing them as savages who were intent on taking over Cambodian land. In the eyes of the regime, the very existence of these savages represented a threat to the survival of the Khmer race. In fact, so extreme was the intent to destroy any trace of the Vietnamese ethnic city in Cambodia that the regime even targeted members of the Khmer Crown group due to their association with Vietnam. Arrests and executions of the Vietnamese were carried out in a methodical and systematic fashion. Vietnamese people were first required to register themselves with their village leaders so that they could be accounted for. Arrests and executions were carried out on the basis of pre-prepared lists. As the implementation of the genocidal campaign began in 1977 and 1978, Vietnamese villages in Prey Wang and Swai were systematically thought out, taken away and executed. Victims were sometimes taken away under the pretext of study, cutting rattan, wines, or transplanting rice. None ever returned. The evidence of genocide in Prey Wang and Swai Rien includes numerous cases of execution of members of mixed families. This is how one witness describes the CPK policy which was implemented throughout these provinces. If the mother was Vietnamese and the father was Cambodian, both mother and children would be taken to be killed. Exception was made only to the father. If the mother was Cambodian and the father was Vietnamese, only the father was taken to be killed. Exception was made to the mother and her children. One witness overheard Kader saying that the reason for this policy was because children suck the milk from the mother. In other words, being born to a Vietnamese mother was enough to justify the death sentence of a young child. The environment in Prey Wang was so merciless that Khmer people were afraid to express any emotion when their Vietnamese family members were taken away. Khmer people who showed sadness and remorse at following the execution of their Vietnamese relatives were sent to be refashioned. Neighbors were required to turn on neighbors with whom they had lived peacefully for years. One witness has lived in the same village as the man who took away his wife and children to be executed. He has not harmed this man. He waits for justice rather than vengeance. The intent of the CPK leadership to annihilate the ethnic Vietnamese group in Prey Wang and Swai Rieng is reinforced by numerous accounts of massacres of the Vietnamese in several parts of the country. One witness observed a massacre at what Sak in Siem Reap province. He will describe for the court the slaughter of Vietnamese men, women, and children, where the adults were beaten to death with bamboo clubs, and the children swung against the trunk of a coconut tree, and the Khmer Rouge cadres asked, All of you. Are all of you Yuan before commencing this execution? One woman was spared because she was able to convince the cadres that she was Chinese rather than Vietnamese. The countrywide implementation of this genocidal policy over the same temporal period indicates that these were not unauthorized, random crimes, but they were meant, sorry, centrally directed 
the near complete destruction of the 20,000 remaining Vietnamese people in the country is compelling evidence of the coordinated plan to destroy this minority in its entirety. Like the Chams, the Vietnamese people were targeted for execution purely on the basis of their ethnicity. The evidence will show not only that the accused order and orchestrated this systematic com campaign of executions, but that they did so with the intent to destroy the Vietnamese minority in Cambodia as a whole. The crimes coincided with speeches and orders issued by the party leadership calling for the destruction of the Vietnamese people. Paul Pot confirmed that the CPK's intention. He stated, we, the men and women of Cambodia, will continue to chop them up, and in the final phase we will enter their territory and kill their women and children, boys, girls, and infants. That way, the evil Yuan race will be wiped up the face of the earth. Your Honours, there is no doubt that the accused shared this intent, and we will prove so at trial. The evidence will establish that the systematic destruction of the Vietnamese people in Preveng and Swiring amounted to genocide for which the accused are criminally responsible. The time is now appropriate for a break. We will have a 20 minutes break and we shall resume. After that, after the pause. Something crouched. All rise, says the gravier.